Councillor Arthur. Uh, thank you. So, so uh, I welcome this pro report. I think most people in Edinburgh recognise there is difficulties travelling across the city centre or central Edinburgh, and I think that's the status quo. Uh, I think going forward as Edinburgh expands and continues to grow, that, that's only going to worsen. And that's me speaking as a resident. We also have to think about visitors uh, and tourists, etc., as well. I think some criticism here questioning the impact of the uh, open street Sundays in dealing with pollution. But I think for me, uh, this is much bigger than just dealing with pollutants. It's also about a change in culture and also about how we see our city going future going forward in the future, sorry. So, so this is a city noted for progress, but I think in this respect we, we are being left behind, uh, particularly when you compare us to other comparable, comparable sized cities. And for sure we are behind, but, and we'll stay behind for some time, but I think this report says that we don't need to stay behind, really, and we mean to, to lead eventually. Well, let's hope, let's hope. Uh, because I think if we don't, I think if we don't take, make progress with this, we'll just flounder in, in the backwash of other cities which are our competitors. But this is a big decision, of course, so it's not surprising that some people want us to wait uh, and delay. And this is because, you know, some of these people will fear change. Uh, others, perhaps, don't recognise the extent of the problem. And I think others still want to wind the clock back to the days when they can drive their car along Princess Street, uh, park outside Marks and Spencers and nip in uh, for a new shirt or tie. But I think there is, there is still real concerns that we have to consider. And I think earlier on we, did, we, spoke, we spoke when we were talking about public transport about making sure people who are vulnerable can still access that system. Uh, uh, Councillor uh, Doran and myself, we were due to meet somebody on Monday uh, in the city chambers, but you couldn't come here because of the closure of the High Street and also Cloburn Street had a disability. Uh, quite ironically, we want to speak about this proposal, uh, but those arrangements made that more difficult for him. So I guess, although it is covered in the report, just to get some reassurance on how we're going to take into account the needs of vulnerable people and also uh, to what extent we're thinking about or well, making sure we just don't push traffic into existing residential streets and causing a whole new level of problems. Thank you. Two, two very easy questions to answer. <laughs> no, I think uh, absolutely the the first the first po the uh, the first objective in our 15 objectives was it's about fairer. The whole project has to be about a fairer city and fairer city centre mm -hmm. and access to people with. Dis, you know, with disabilities, with sensory impairments, or you know, any kind of, um, if you feel vulnerable, it, it, access should not be a problem to come into the city centre. So, what we are proposing to do is, once we have the consultants on board, to have, ensure that we have the highest level of integrated impact assessment we can we can have. We can um, start to look at you know, start to look at the the real detail of what it is that people, uh, the barriers that people face, and start to look at look at that in more detail. Um, I'm keen that the integrated impact assessment forms the heart of what we do, the project that we do, or that we come forward with, because to me this is less about transport, it's more about social justice, and genuinely, because it's about people, and, um, and we, yeah, if we don't address that right at the outset, then there is no chance of success for this project. Uh, what was the second question? Sorry, on to others. Yeah, um, that's going to be. I mean, there is no, there is no easy solution, and I think that's where the range of options comes in. You know, you can have the one thing that we don't want to see is the city centre forming a cliff edge, and then suddenly across the city centre you have your, um, you have your huge pollutants or big problems, network problems. So that's where um, Ewan's going to come in and wave his magic wand. <laughs> no, I think there's, go there's going to be a big piece of work to be done. To me, data, it has to be data-driven. Uh, the way we collect data is probably uh, not as cutting-edge as it should be. And one of the things that the consultants coming in, one of the, th the strands of work they have to do is to look at data in a more global sense, in a city sense, and start to see where people travel and how and why, and then provide other options. Op options and opportunities for people to do so. so. And, and I think that's absolutely key because I think that perhaps the, the opponents of this project, they, they, they're perhaps they present it as cars versus you know, other modes of transport, whereas, whereas in fact it's about people 
and having a discussion with people about how best to move around our city. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of cyclist versus pedestrian versus motorist versus all of that. And I think, you know, what this prospectus has tried to do is to take that argument and say that's not, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is how people move, how do goods move, how do we, as a city, make this better for everybody.